course, the war was not over, but we were now planning the invasion of Japan. <clears throat> Upon the conclusion of the battle in Luzon, I was sometime in July transferred to Corps Headquarters, <clears throat> First Corps Headquarters, which was in charge of the 6th Army and the 8th Army. And it was my job <clears throat> assigned to the G4 section to be the chief clerk of the G4 section, which handled supply and transportation for combat troops. One night, at about 11 o'clock at night, I was in the process of typing an order to receive for our 6th Army and 8th Army and all their units some 50,000 mattress covers. Typing away, when an announcement came over the loudspeaker system that our Air Force had just dropped bombs, a bomb, on Hiroshima and that we expected very shortly the Japanese would surrender. With that information, everybody was happy. I turned around to the major or colonel who was behind me in his office. Everybody worked all night. And I asked him, what do I do? And he said, keep typing. The war was not over. I ordered the 50,000 mattress covers. And do you know what a mattress cover is? We didn't have any mattresses. <laughs> mattress cover was a body bag. After another bomb in Nagasaki, a few days later, the Japanese did surrender. And immediately, our instructions were to continue typing because now we are going to have not a battle command but an occupation command. Actually in September I then was assigned to ship <laughs> which would take me and several thousand men along with other ships with several other thousands of men to Wakayama, Japan, where we would occupy the territory and cause the Japanese to succumb uh, to the needs of the American military. I dismounted from that ship when we arrived in Wakayama by climbing down the look the rope ladders and getting into a landing craft and taking that landing craft to the shoreline. We've been warned by the military commanders that we could expect suicide people who were going to, like kamikaze pilots, fight to the end. We expected that boys and girls, eight and ten years old, would have been taught how to sabotage and bomb soldiers who would appear on the beach. And we were ready for battle when we disarmed, when we dis disembarked from the ships. We did not know what we were going to get into. We expected we might have difficulty. We're quite surprised when we found people greeting us on the beach. Still suspicious of these honest greets or are they gonna try and hit us when we get close? No, they were honest welcomes. In Wakayama, we immediately took over the military base that was stationed right there. But we couldn't occupy it. 
because it was so filled with dirt, garbage, and lice that our people could not even enter those buildings safely. So in effect, we set up camp outside the buildings. And two days later, I personally, as the chief clerk of the G4 section, was ordered to go to Osaka because we're going to be moving our headquarters to Osaka and they wanted me to go as an advance party to pick out an office in one of the buildings that was being organized as a headquarters. When I got there, I was the only non-commissioned officer. I was a staff sergeant. <laughs> Everybody else was lieutenants, colonels, majors. They were picking out offices for their command. And I realized that they're going to take anything I wanted, so the elevators weren't working, and few of them would climb the stairs because we didn't know the condition of the building. But I figured, let me go upstairs. I know that in most corporate headquarters, corporate offices are on the top floors. So I went up and I got up to the fifth or sixth floor and lo and behold, there was an executive office with mahogany tables and curtains. And, and I wrote a note and put it on the door. <laughs> G4 section, core headquarters. <laughs> and of course, I was followed up the stairs by other people and it turned out the general staff decided they would like that office. And I said, oh, I, I claimed it. You guys can have the next one around the corner. And they honored that. And I actually claimed the executive office of the Sumitomo Company <laughs> to be the headquarters company for core headquarters. Within a few weeks, we were happily housed in that area. And we continued the paperwork for the occupation of Japan, ordering the materials we need for the supplies of our troops, which now included textbooks for elementary schools and high schools in Japanese and in English. Because General MacArthur, very intelligent, decided that he was changing the society of Japan, which was strictly male and run by an emperor. But the emperor was considered by the people to be a deity figure related to God. And you don't take the emperor and crucify him for the sins of the world book, because the people considered him to be a representative of their gods. General MacArthur allowed the emperor to stay as the leader under his command, but he also insisted that the girls, the population of females, would no longer be second-rate citizens the girls would be going to school. The educational systems were reopened almost immediately, and immediately girls were sent to school to become educated. General MacArthur also did not do anything to the Japanese people that would have been retribution for what was the invasion of Pearl Harbor. 